Hi guys, Steve here. I think I'm going to blow this space station conspiracy wide open. And that has to do with the fact that, even Jaron brought this up before, that the space station does not give you a continuous feed. It looks like the ISS live footage will not go one hour without going offline. And question is why is that what are they trying to hide well they are trying to hide something and I'm not sure if this was brought up before I really haven't been following any of the flat earthers information on their watching of the ISS feed but I just figured this out by understanding the go fast rocket launch in 2014 and a flat earther uploaded this video and said look you can see the moon from this altitude of the rocket. Now, let me put a disclaimer here. I don't believe the GoFast went 73 miles, as they claim, uh, because you can just do a little simple Google wiki search on the accelerometers that are inside the, the rockets. Uh, they are not suitable for measuring high altitude conditions or whatever. It's called the gravitational gradient. And so it's, it uh, to me, no. It didn't get that high, especially because I know there's a glass ceiling at 100 kilometers, which is 62 miles. So we have the tops of the upper atmospheric lightning. We have the bottom of the roars. We have the Schumann resonance. We have the radio wave propagation all at that 100 kilometer level. But in any regard, this rocket, this rocket did get up very high. Maybe it went up 60 miles or something like that. And it is viewing the moon. And I guess... During the time of day when this rocket was launched out of Nevada, the moon was hovering over somewhere in Australia, which is a good, I think it's like a, a good 110, 115 longitudinal degrees away and not visible from the ground. And so that made me think about this a little bit. And then I started to realize, put two and two together, we're living inside the spherical concavity of the Earth. Let me get the screen up here. So here's a little a diagram of this. Oops. Sorry about that. We're looking top down. Okay. And light is bending. Light bends upward toward the center of the Earth. And I have a series of lines here. Nevada being down here in the bottom. And these red lines are indicating line of sight lines. Also, the green lines are indicating sight lines, and the blue lines are indicating sight lines. So your visibility is actually accentuated exponentially the higher you go, and it doesn't take much height for you to reach uh, incredible visibility range. So these green lines are actually the sight lines of the GoFast rocket. If I zoom in really close here, I'm sorry, I guess it's at the red lines. Did I say green? Yeah, it should be the green lines. I got that mixed up. Bear with me here. I'm going to just fix this on the fly. Because I'm too lazy to start this video over. Okay. In the meantime, I can sing you a song, and the theme song is We're Living on the Edge by Aerosmith. There's something wrong in the world today, light bulbs getting dim, something wrong with our eyes. And God knows it is something wrong with our eyes. We're living on the edge. Yes, we're living on the edge of the inside of the earth. We're living on the edge. Living on the edge. Okay, there we go.
Thank you, Steve Tyler. All right, so we have this GoFest rocket here, the green lines, okay? It's below the glass sky at 100 kilometers. And the green lines are accentuating your visibility range. Look at that. Now, this is just an estimation of the curvature, but what it's doing is it's enhancing the visibility by curving around more so. So we have the sun right over here, and we have the moon over here. Okay. So let's pretend this is Australia. And this is Nevada. So when the rocket, it just takes, you know, 60 miles. And look at that. It enhances your visibility by so much. And it goes all the way around like that. And it curves around back up so you see the front face of the moon again. Now also note is that when you look at this footage here, the moon looks dimmer. It looks kind of like brownish. And that's also because we're not looking from the ground where we have the luminiferous ether that's enhancing our illumination. Keep that in mind too. So when you see celestial objects from above the ether, above the ozone layer, um, that's why you don't see the stars in the sky. Because it's, it's you want to, if you want to call it the dynamic contrast ratio or whatever, but it's the ether is not enhancing our illumination. So going back to this understanding of things, if we go as high as the claimed height of the International Space Station, which is 250 miles or 400 kilometers, it would be about right there. So that would enhance our visibility even more. Now watch the blue lines. The blue lines are converging all the way around like that. Okay. So what that means is that from the space station altitude, if it is that high, okay, it might be lower, it might be below the glass sky. Maybe they never went through the glass sky, but I do believe it's up there. I'm not sure if it's if it's manned. I don't, it's probably not manned. They probably do that somewhere underground with a clinostat or something like that. But there is something up there, and it's something that's taking pictures. And looky here, look how much range of visibility you have of the sun. Here's the sun right here. That's the moon. And that's the sun. So within these blue lines here, if this is a 360 degree circle, you have 350 degrees of sun. You see the sun more than 95% of the time. Okay, maybe it's a little bit less. I'm, you know, I'm just, these are just estimates, okay? Maybe it's only within these green lines that you see the sun, but still, that's more than 180 degrees that would be the amount of sunshine sunshine we would see from the ground. So the higher we go, the greater the greater angular degrees or azimuthal degrees of the sun we see or the moon. Okay? So keep that in mind. So that's why we're able to see this moon from Aust which is hovering over Australia from Nevada when we just go up 60 miles. That's why now, now we get back to the conspiracy, right? First of all, why don't they ever, as far as I know, I don't really watch them, but does the space station Videos recently, it's, it's ever show footage of the sun at any length of time, any given length of time, or the moon? They don't, do they? And also, look, just watch their live feed. I was watching this, and I counted 54 minutes now, keep in mind, it takes 93 min or 92.6 minutes for the, the, the ISS to do one orbital circuit around the inside of the Earth. 92.6 minutes. So half of that would be 46 point whatever, three minutes, 46.3 minutes. So if you're down on the ground, um, well, you're not down on the ground. You're up above here. So, okay you are seeing more than 180 degrees. So 43 minutes, 43.3 minutes is 180 degrees. And they're chopping off this feed. I, I'm, I'm sure they um, I'm sure somebody has counted longer than 54 minutes. I counted 54 minutes of when the ISS is basking in the sun. Complete sunshine. Oh, there's some shadows, yeah, but 
it's still receiving sunlight. That's what I'm trying to get to. Okay. 54 minutes and then they chop it. Okay. It's not even, you know, it's not fading into darkness. It's a chop. It's just a hard cut. You know what I'm talking about, gosh? Right there. They'll cut it. And sometimes they won't show the shot of the ISS at all. Okay, what are they trying to do here? They're hiding the fact that the ISS is basking in sunlight 90% of the time. 90% of one revolution inside the Earth. At least 90%. So maybe, or maybe, who knows. But I would say out of those 93 minutes, at least 70 of those minutes, probably more, are when the ISS is actually receiving sunlight. Okay. Now I went into 3D and I made a little mock heliocentric model. And this is the camera at ground. The horizon looks flat. This is the camera at uh, 250 miles with. Oh, I'm not, you're, not, you're not seeing that. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Let's go back. This is the camera at ground. Horizon looks straight. And then this is the camera at 250 miles high. And actually, I tilted the camera down. So actually, it's kind of funny. If I don't tilt the camera down, look at that. You don't even see the, you don't even see the horizon. <laughs> Baller, this is such bullshit. Okay. But it's not flat, guys. Otherwise, um, there's, no, there's too many problems with Flat Earth. I, I don't want to list them all. I, I want you guys to be my friends, Flatties. Okay? But the sun and the moon would never touch the horizon if the Earth was flat, for one thing. Okay? But going back here, let's go back here. So, this is at the cameras at ground level. And I'll show you the camera. The camera's at ground level. Okay, and then the camera goes up to 250 miles above a round Earth. All right, so back, back to the camera view here, and I'm going to tilt the camera down again so I can see the fake ball Earth. Uh, tilt. There we go. We see it. Okay, we got the moon on top of the sun. This is just for reference. Normally that wouldn't be like that. And so, going back to frame zero, we have the moon on top of the sun, and then this is at zero elevation, and then frame one, we have the moon on top of the sun at 250 mile elevation. And so what I did was I angled the sun and the moon downward and so you are increasing your visibility of the sun and moon 18 degrees now that would be 18 degrees one way toward one horizon and 18 degrees toward the other horizon giving you a total of 36 degrees okay so you're you, you would see the sun and the moon more either it would be 36 more degrees out of a 360 degree circle so obviously 180 plus 360 i'm sorry 180 plus 36 is 216 degrees so however i am assuming i'm guessing I'm, I, I know i'm right this is what's going on this is why they're hiding the feed uh, because the iss is receiving way more than 216 degrees of sunlight it's, you just simply have to do the math Okay, 93 minutes to do one full cycle. 92.6 minutes to do one full cycle. And I guarantee you, if you find anything over an hour long, well, I guess you can't find it. So it's going to be less than an hour. But during that time, it certainly looks like, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I just started looking into this, but it certainly looks like that, that vehicle is basking in the sun for at least 54 minutes and obviously I'm assuming it's probably up to at least 70 75 minutes and that's the reason why they cut the feed every hour that's the reason why Jaron
That's the reason why. I don't know if you guys are shilling for them to kind of keep this up and kind of deflect and draw the attention away from the real reason. If you are, shame on you guys. In my version of Bob. But that's that's it. That's the reason why they're cutting the footage. It all has to do with the increased amount of visible sun and moon and increased amount of absorption of the sunlight on the vehicle itself during the course of a one revolution orbit around the inside of the earth okay something wrong in the world today something's wrong with our eyes we're living on the edge of the interior of the earth okay, this is another great reason to believe that you're inside the spherical cellular concave earth okay i busted iss nasa hello iss live night live stream earth from space live nasa hdev video flat earth followers look away well what about the concave earth followers <laughs> This is wonderful. This is like a present. Thank you, NASA. Remember my previous video where I showed how it's impossible for the for the ISS to be uh, basking in the sunshine, you know, a good portion of the 93 orbit that they make around the inside of the Earth. This is a false curvature. Light is bending up at the edges here. You don't realize it, but the trajectory of the light is going to bend up so you don't see what's beyond. Okay, There's more Earth beyond here. It's just the way that light works. But that's not what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to show you how it is physically impossible for the ISS to, exhi to be exhibiting sunshine. You know, right here. It's basking in the sunshine, even though it's dark, right? It's supposedly at 250 mile altitude. And it's traveling from the west to the east. It makes an orbit around the inside of the Earth every 93 minutes. And so 93 minutes, that's an hour and a half. Right? So the, and the sun is moving from the east to the west. Okay, That's actually going, going to lengthen the amount of darkness because you're going against the grain of the sun. You're going against the movement of the sun. You're going from west to east, and the sun is moving from east to west. So you're, that's also going to limit the amount of dark, uh, the amount of daylight you have, the amount of sunshine that you have shining on the ISS. And so, in my previous video, I showed you how it is impossible for the ISS to be basking in the sunshine. This one here I uploaded back on June 10th. And I did the, the calculations on a convex ball earth with straight light at 250 mile altitude. Um, you're going to have about 216 degrees of visibility of the sun on a convex earth with 93 minutes orbit. So it calculates roughly to about 55 and a half minutes of sunshine. That was not even taking into account that you're going against the direction of the sun. <laughs> so it's going to be, you should see even, even, uh, even more darkness. So you should see, you should see probably about, you know, let's, let's, near, let's chop off another, at least another five minutes. You should only see about 50 minutes of sunshine. Okay. Because you're going at, somebody is, Somebody that's good in math can actually do the calculations. But there's no way, and I just caught them in this clip, there's no way you're going to see, I got, I got 60 minutes of ISS basking, and that's not even, see what they do, they don't start, they don't start the clip from sunrise to sunset. They start it, oh, maybe.
maybe it's good, you know, 10, 15 minutes in. But regardless of where they started, they've already been busted. See, like prior to this clip here, I'm just going five second arrow keying at a time here. What does it say at the top? Recorded. ISS is on the night side of Earth. Live viewing will start again when it enters daylight. No, no. We want to see it. No, see, you just caught it right there. We want to see it when, at least when the sun is beginning to illuminate onto the craft. We want to see it from sunrise, not from, you know, 10 minutes into the sunrise. Okay, so anyway, but since you, that's all you give us, that's what we'll go by. You got minus 154. Minus 154. Actually, it's a little bit more than... Okay, minus 154. Okay, we'll say minus 154.02. And then we go all the way to minus 53. Right there. Minus 55, minus 54 about. So we got one hour. One, that's 60 minutes. 60 minutes out of the 93 minutes, the craft is basking in the sunshine. Now you have this little blip here, this little intermission clip saying, oh, the high definition Earth viewing experiment is either switching cameras or we're experiencing a temporary loss of signal. Well, no, they didn't switch cameras because look, if you go before and after that little screen, it's the same camera angle. It's just that the clouds have moved and the shadows on the craft have moved, but it's still in sunshine. So it's the same camera. You got 60 minutes here, and that's when you started the little sequence a good portion after sunrise. I don't think they ever show it when it's going from sunrise to sunset. They always cut it. You know, they're always going to, that's the reason why is because, like I said before, you have a greater periphery once you go up higher in the concave cellular earth. It's just that you are, you're getting a greater periphery. If I go back to my ISS busted video, I show that. So the higher you go, these contour lines, I'll put the link of this video in the description box, is going to allow you to see a greater periphery and exponentially greater. So if you go just up 250 miles, you're going to be able to see the sun, you know, a good 90% of the time. Because that's just how the, the light works, the bending light within the earth. And so back in this video, I say you're going to see at least you know, a good 75 minutes out of the 93 minutes, you're going to be able to see that sun from that altitude. And that's why they never show you a full clip from sunrise to sunset. They always cut it. And what's wrong with just showing darkness? You don't have to, I mean, why don't you just, you don't have to go to this recorded blah, blah, blah. Just show us the darkness. We want to see a full unedited orbit a full unedited 93 orbit from sunrise to sunrise all the way around you don't show that and the reason they don't show that is because you're inside the concave cellular earth light is bending and you have a greater periphery of the sun you'll be able to see that sun a good 75 minutes out of the 93 minutes okay we already got 60 minutes here that's arts already too much because you're going against the sun you would see less sun on the craft okay i mean if you're let's just say you're 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 orbiting i know it doesn't orbit on on the equator but let's just say you're orbiting on the equator half of those 93 minutes would be 46 and a half minutes but you're going against the sun so that's it you have to like realize that the sun is going to be an hour and a half um, change in longitude over that course of 93 minutes. So that's a good, you know, 20 degrees or whatever. So that's going to limit your sunshine as well. You know what I'm saying? So if you were going around the equator, it would be less than half. 
it wouldn't be 46 minutes. It'd probably be like 40 minutes. But we already got 60 minutes. <laughs> and then that's what it with it clipped. <laughs> that's with it clipped. Oh, this is the recorded part. This is where... Right... Right there. NASA, I want to see sunrise to sunrise. And I want to count the number of minutes that the craft is basking in the sun. I'm going to say it's about 70... I'll say, I'll say 72 minutes. And I'll say 70, 74 minutes. We already got 60 minutes here. <laughs> and that's already way too much. Okay? It's already way too much. <laughs> oh, you're so busted. It's going above the glass, guys. That's why when we take a, when we look at the ISS through telescopes on the ground, it has that that coloring effect, that chromatic aberration effect. It's because we're we're viewing it through the glass. It's above the glass. They poked a hole in the glass. Those dirty bastards. At least one hole. Many more. And that's why they fucked up the atmosphere, and that's why they sprayed the skies with chemtrails to keep the heat down and to keep the ice from falling. This is very simple. That's why pilots have a pact. They know that they're flying inside the Earth. And that's why this is a big, big secret. Thanks for watching.